Pat was there in the middle of that thing for the whole thing. Nice. Those guys relied on him so much, bro. It was almost like he was the third man in, right. in that match. Bro, the, the, the respect they had for that guy. Uh, let's talk about uh, the Sean uh, versus Brett Iron Man match, uh, blowing down memory lane. So, Iron Man match '96, right? That was uh, one that '96, the Iron Man match between uh, with uh, Jose Lothario and all that, all that at WrestleMania, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then Gorilla comes out. Uh, it's it's a draw, and there's two more minutes, and then the the boyhood dream comes true, and all that, and. And what'd you what you think about that, East? You were uh, a little kid watching that at uh, WrestleMania. I was certainly a Sean kid, and you know, I don't think I understood the gravitas of a sixty-minute match, and I was probably tuned in and out watching it. Where you know, I just didn't understand the art and sport of wrestling at the time. One thing that stands out is, uh, like, with today's talent, having five-minute, eight-minute matches putting everything together the entire time, the entire day, walking around, slapping their legs while they're talking about the match for the 400th time. Like, think about this. Brett goes out there. Like, he's not talking to Sean in the back because Sean's up in the upper deck getting hooked up the zip line in. Mm -hmm. Guys just went out there and did it and did 60 incredible minutes when you watch it back. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, that's just... It, to coup de grave, great wrestling, and you know it stands the test of time. Certainly, uh, enjoyed it. I did not know at the time too, because Sean was like my uh, an idol in a sense. So I didn't know he's telling Brett, tell him to get the hell out of the ring. This is my moment. <laughs> like, <laughs> which, which is something when talent later on in our careers, anytime we had moments in like FCW or NXT, we would whisper that to each other or mm -hmm. tell them, I would tell them that just because it was a fun rib we had. Mm, nice. Was you uh, where would you rank that among the top wrestling matches of all time? I top hate three, top five, top five, top three. I hate, I hate star ratings and I hate judging. Like I have a my own personal scale. It's all yeah, it's, it's subjective. Yeah, so like my scale goes, you know, excellent, very good, good, eh, and then straight up dog. Shit. So that's certainly one of the ones that are excellent I, you could definitely put in the top 10 without thinking about it and it's probably the top five. how was how would you rate their rope work oh well hold on there was a sunset flip if i recall the second <laughs> that's rope, true an elbow drop yeah brett probably came off of his elbow drop yeah he did the yeah. i don't think there was one springboard in that match i would give the rope work a 2.4 out of Ooh, five. wow wow not, not to say that they're overall, you know, tape and the strikes exchange and the holds, you know, mentioned in the rope breaks usage. Yeah. Like, none, none of that matters though, East, if the rope work's not good though. So you, you've got to have solid rope work in order for any of that to matter. So I'm, I'm just <laughs> old man yelling at a cloud. Okay. Yes, indeed. <laughs> yeah, I I rank that among yeah, probably top. I would say top five. Um, uh, Taker and Sean at 25 is up there for me. Uh, offhand, uh, I'd probably say Steamboat Savage is probably number one or two at WrestleMania three. Steamboat Flair at Shot Town Rumble that was a really good one too. That's probably top three for me uh, in the top three. So those are probably all just offhand. Uh, a big sleeper was Perfect versus Flair. The 1993 Monday Night Raw Loser Leaves match. For those uh, looking at this, watch that on YouTube. I remember when I popped for that, uh, uh, watching that, me and my brother, uh, my little brother. He's just a year younger than me. There's, there's only been about like a handful of matches that I popped for. <clears throat> when Perfect beat Flair at on Raw in 93, I popped for it. When Ron Simmons won the uh, WCW World Heavyweight Championship, I popped. It's probably one of my favorite moments of all time is when Simmons. I, I remember the Ron Simmons win and watch it back. I didn't watch it live. I was too young. But I remember like the reaction of this crowd and this Amazing. old ass lady in like the second row who's like popcorn goes <laughs> <laughs> orgasm and ovulate 
and had a child and like <laughs> like left her body and went to heaven and came back all in like one moment when he won. So it was amazing. Yeah, it was I uh, I remember Chris. I popped just this last uh, Monday when Raw ended. <laughs> Well, there you go. Big pop, big pop came out of me right from this chair, bro. And when I saw that little logo in the corner, bro, I, yes, yes, yes. There you go. Man. That was uh, uh, Simmons, and I think I think my favorite two of all time was uh, was Simmons winning and uh, Sting winning the uh, the his first WCW. Or in, uh, in NWA, WCW World Heavyweight Championship at uh, Great American Bass, 1990. Uh, Vince, where were you at 1990? Were you were you a, a big wrestling fan in 1990? Uh, 1990, I owned my video stores, bro. So I was working my rear end off. Man. And we knew that because we knew that you were owning your video stores because of uh, old Johnny Rods. Yes, uh, yes. talked about that when I interviewed him. Uh, yes, sir. Time. He still, oh, looks, he still looks great, too. Man. Yeah, 81, man. 81 years old. Johnny uh, Rods. How mad did you get when people returned their videos to not rewound? Nah, mm. bro. Bro, it, it wasn't even that. It was not paying late fees, bro. Mm. Oh, yeah. oh we, got, we got ripped out of so much money. Sheesh. <laughs> Be kind, rewind. Yes. Vince, your thoughts on Sean versus Brett? You were uh, there as a writer. I was there, bro. Is it, the, bro, the thing to the beautiful thing to see, and we were talking about it a little earlier. Was bro, Pat was there in the middle of that thing for the whole thing. Nice. Those guys relied on him so much, bro. It was almost like he was the third man in right. in that match, bro. The the, the respect they had for that guy and he was so excited about that match pat but it, it really when you look at that match bro and the way you guys put it over th that was a three-man match bro i i saw them all day long bro think think about laying out a 60 minute match yeah it's a lot yeah it's, yeah do you think it was hurt by the fact there were no falls except for the sudden death overtime Man, I, I remember that was debated for a long, long time. I, I don't I don't think there was personally. Hmm. I think history looks kindly upon it, but I could see fans in the moment being kind yeah. of like not they're not you're not conditioned to watch an hour of wrestling when you're yeah. like five days right. all the time. You're right, bro, absolutely. <clears throat> on on the other hand though, I think that the anticipation factor uh was was good in that because people were anticipating the first fall and as time started to lapse further and further down then you get a heightened anticipation of like who's going to get that fall just in time and yeah. then when it expired people are like oh well, what do we do now you know what i mean because there's been other mat iron man matches that's been like a bunch of falls i remember uh, Angle versus Lesnar. I think it was like on a SmackDown or something. It was like a bunch of different falls all, of, all in the same match. So. Well, I think too, like why I say history looks kindly upon that is that it left the Iron Man match somewhere to go. Yeah. Because if they went out there and did, you know, four to three, mm -hmm. like you already established a precedent where therefore you can do a two to one and then you can do a three to two and then, a you know. Yeah. Yeah. It was a great story talk. Pat did awesome. Yeah, he did. It was fantastic storytelling. So 